Hey there guys, it's Lee here, aka Risky Randoms. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to plot your hard drives for BurstCoin using the CPU plotter and a GPU plotter, which is faster. So if you can um, use that, I would recommend it. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on a Windows 10 machine. You can use it on um, any version of uh, Windows. Um, and I'll be talking you through the whole sort of uh, process from start to finish and uh, getting you up and running with the uh, burst coin plotting. Okay, so we've just uh, jumped over to Windows now. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna be showing you is how to use the uh, CPU plotter. So if I just um, go to the file that I wanna be working with, so I'm just gonna be going to the hard drive uh, F. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, um, ignore all the other folders, but the two files, there's actually two in here. Um, this is the W plot generator, and that's the one that we're actually going to be used to making the actual plots. And they also have this make plots uh, bat file as well as. So if I just go and um, edit this one, um, I'll put a link to these in the actual description so you can download the actual um, sample batch file and also um, the actual program itself. Okay, so this is the sample batch file. So the very first part of it is the W plot generator. That's the call to the actual program itself. Then we have a space, and then we have this number here, which is our um, numeric account ID. This number, you actually need to get it from your BurstCoin wallet. If you look at my previous video about setting up BurstCoin, I would have talked about this numeric um, account ID. This one is actually for another wallet of mine, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this one to the one that we set up in the actual uh, BurstCoin uh, demo. So you can see I've got this other number here. I didn't actually label those, but um, I know this one is a numeric account ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste that in there. So yeah, this number is really um, important. Um, once you get your numeric account ID, um, make sure you have access to that wallet because once you plot all of your um, hard drives, it all gets linked to this account ID. Basically, this is a, uh, a numbered reference to your Burst Coin um, address. So you wanna make sure that it is correct and linked to your address before you start plotting. Okay, so we've got the program, we've got your numeric account ID. The second part, this number here is actually a longer number, but for you guys, it will actually be, if you're plotting for the very first time, it will actually be zero. Um, this part of the file is actually your starting nonce, uh, or the very first um, section of your burst coin plots. So for your first um, plot file, you wanna start with zero. Um, and then we'll move on from there. The second part, so we start at zero, and then the second part, this number here, is how many um, nonces uh, you actually want to create. Um, so in here, we might say uh, 10,000. So what it's gonna go from is zero to 10,000. Um, uh, the next part is what's called a stagger. Um, the stagger is a, uh, a reference to how many nonces that you've got. Uh, what you want to do is you want to set the stagger um, as high as you possibly can. Um, if you set it too high, um, it will try and use um, your system memory and then it will crash. So yeah, if you just set it too high, um, the system will just crash and you just need to uh, reduce the actual amount. And um, there is some documentation on it. I'll try and find and um, explain the actual stagger size back to you. But for the WP uh, plot generator, it's a multiple of your um, installed um, system RAM. So at the moment, I actually have it set to um, 20,000, which is not really gonna work because you can't, um, our nonce is running at 10,000. So let's just, for example, let's just change that uh, to back to 40,000. So the stagger size has to be uh, in relation to how many nonces that you want to create. So uh, this is a little bit complicated because it affects, it's based on your, your system RAM and also how many nonces you actually want to create as well. So let's just cover the uh, system RAM um, first. So at the moment it's set to 20,000. That will actually use um, five megabytes of system RAM. Um, so it's actually done on a multiple of um, four. So whatever you type in here, it will be four times your um, 
it sorry it will be divided by uh, four it will give you the use of your system ram um so yeah we put twenty thousand in there and it's going to use five megs of system ram okay um if we put ten thousand in there it's going to use two and a half megs forty thousand would be ten megs um so hopefully that kind of explains it in a understandable way. But you want to kind of have this number here, this stagger number, to use up as much RAM as possible. Um, what it's actually going to do is um, create a buffer in your RAM before writing to the actual hard drive. Um, and what this means is that the writing is going to be more efficient. And also uh, when it comes to actually reading the plots afterwards, um, it will read, uh, the plots will be read in a more efficient and faster way as well. So you kind of want your stagger size to be as high as possible. Um, just going back, what I said, there is actually a relation between the stagger size and the nonce size. Uh, you want the two to correlate to each other. So for example, we've got a um, stagger size of uh, 20,000 and, and the actual plot size of um, 40,000. So it's basically going to run twice and it will create those plots. Um, what you can't have um, in this example is you can't have a stagger size of say um, 15,000 because that doesn't go into 40,000. Um, you know, you could use uh, 10,000 because obviously that's dividable, uh, you know, the 40,000 is divided equally uh, between the 10. So that's going to basically write four times to get the number that you want. So just make sure the two um, uh, divide by each other. So you should always end up with a whole number. Hopefully um, I've explained that uh, correctly. Um, or at least in a way that makes sense. If it doesn't, then I'll try and add that little bit extra in the description. But yeah, you always want your nonces to be evenly dividable by your stagger. I think that confirms it. Um, okay, so then we've got a space. Then the next part is uh, seven. Um, this is how many CPU threads you want to be using um, on your machine. Um, I've got a uh, Intel i7 uh, 950 and that has four cords but eight threads. So this is how many uh, threads you're actually gonna be using. So I'm gonna use uh, seven threads and that just leaves me one extra for um, you know background services and running the system and stuff like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to say that now. So we've got um, 10,000 and 40,000, and I'm just going to save this. So it's make plots .bat. You can save it wherever you want. Um, and then I'm going to show you that running. So if I just double click it, uh, what I'm also going to do is um, I'll open up the uh, task manager as well, just to kind of show you what's going on um, alongside it. So it says creating plots for nonces zero to 40,000, approximately nine gigs, and it's using two and a half uh, gigs of RAM, uh, RAM and using seven threads. And um, so that's gonna um, run. It will take a couple of minutes to sort of um, get going. Um, you can see on the actual um, task manager, we're using up to about 90%, and then you'll see the RAM um, start picking up and then what you'll also see is the actual, it will actually start writing to disk as well. Um, and that will continue on from there. Okay, so I just left it running for a minute there just to kind of show you how this next um, sort of stage works. So yeah, it basically got up to two and a half gigs of uh, RAM and then it started writing to the actual sort of disk. So you can see that in the actual task manager. On the left hand side, you will see it says it's 25% done and this is the actual, uh, the write speed. Um, so yeah, with this um, CPU, um, that kind of speed is probably about right. Um, and you know, if you're if you're plotting a small disk drive, um, that's fine, you can just leave it running. You know, it might take a couple of hours if you're, if you're plotting um, a few hundred gigabytes, um, but that will work fine for you. Okay, let's just um, close this down. Um, I just wanna show you one other thing. So. With the uh, CPU plotter, I'm just gonna go back and edit this uh, batch file as well. Um, there's one other thing that you can do is, oh, sorry, just to mention where the actual plots get run. You wanna run these, keep these files in the root, so the very top of your actual hard drive. And then what actually happens is when you run them, it will actually create a folder called plots. And then inside you'll actually see a plot file. That's just a dummy ones that I sort of uh, made from earlier. Um, let's just delete those. 
so yeah, it creates the folder and it creates the actual plot files within them. I'll come back to the plot files in a moment. Um, so if we just go um, back to our make plots dot bat, so 0 to 40,000, and then we've got this um, stagger size. Uh, there's also, well, for this actual plot, there's also a switch. So you can do slash a sync. And what it's actually going to use is like a background sort of service. It uses twice as much RAM, but it should also write a little bit faster and a little bit more consistent as well. So I'll leave the stagger as it is, and I'll use the async switch, and you'll see that it uses more RAM, and, but also should write faster over the long time as well. So um, it doesn't work on all systems, but if you can use that async switch, um, I'd recommend it. So if I just double click that again, you can see that we're now using 5,000 megs of RAM, and then it'll just write um, as it did in the first sort of um, instance. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll just let that go through for uh, uh, just one minute, and then I'll just talk about the actual uh, plot files um, themselves. Okay, so that's just been running for uh, about a minute. You can see it's 25% um, done, and you can see it's running a little bit faster. So yeah, using um, slightly more RAM, um, but also plots um, a little bit faster, so that's good. Um, I'm just gonna let this uh, finish, and then I'll talk about the actual plot files themselves. Okay, so the plot is just about finished um, now. You can set it, see, it says it's 100% done, um, but it's just if it says that, don't close the actual window, just let it um, continue because it's not quite done. Once it's finished, it will actually close itself. So yeah, don't close it too early. Uh, I'll just close the task manager now. Um, and what I'll do is, um, I'll just show you the actual plots file itself, um, as I said. Uh, this is how I normally have it set up. So I've got um, 12 megs of system RAM. So with this stagger 20, tw sorry, 22,000, um, that will use um, 11 uh, gigs of my system RAM. Um, and then, yeah, seven, seven threads and then async and as normal. So that's how, if I was going to use this personally, like I say, I've got um, 12 gigs of RAM. Um, this is how I would have it um, set up. Okay, so let's just take a look at the actual uh, plot files that we created now. So like I said, with this uh, plot generator, it creates a new folder for you, and it also creates the files uh, within that folder. So if we open that up, so this is the actual file that we've uh, created. You can see on the actual disk, it's just over um, 10 gigs. Um, if we go to properties there, you can see the actual um, true um, size there. Um, okay, so the very first part is our numeric account ID, then it have a space, or in this case an underscore, start in nonce, zero, how many nonces there actually are in the file, 40,000, and then we have underscore, then we have our stagger. So that's our very first um, plot file. Okay, so just to give you a few tips uh, with regards to creating your plot files, when you create them, you want to create your plots as uh, big as you possibly can, um, using as many nonces as you can to fit on your actual disk space. Um, and you also want to create them uh, using as big a staggers as you can. Um, so uh, in addition to that, you also kind of want um, fewer plot files. So say for example, let's say I wanted to create a um, 100 gigs worth of plots. I wouldn't create 10, um, you know, 10 times 10, file, 10 gig files. I would create just one 100 gig file. Um, the reason for that is because it's um, all to do with efficiency. Um, the file would be read much faster. Um, one 100 gig file is read much faster than 10, 10 gig files, um, just for the, uh, the design of the machine and the actual systems upon it. So yeah, always create your plot sizes um, as big as possible, a fewer files as possible, with as big a stagger as possible as well. That's just a, a little tip for you guys. Okay, so just before we move on, um, I just talked about um, creating your plot files um, as big as possible and as few as possible. Um, but you might also be wondering um, what happens if you wanted to create a second plot file. So maybe you've filled up one hard drive and you want to you know, create some more plots on um, secondary hard drives or even in different folders or different locations. Um, you can do that. One of the things that you need to be aware of is this um, start in nonce and the how many nonces you're actually running. So in the very first instance, we've done from zero plus 40,000. 
So if, if we wanted to create a new plot, what you don't want is you don't want to overlap them. So we wouldn't run this again and just save it in a different location because it will be um, a clone essentially of the very first one that we made. Um, you're not gonna find any new deadlines or make any uh, revenue from that. So if, if we wanted to create our second plot, what we would do is we would actually start at 40,000. Oh, sorry, 40,000. And then what it's going to do is it's going to start at 40,000 plus 40,000. Okay. Um, and then if we, you know, if we wanted to create a third one, then we would be starting at 120,000 plus 40,000. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So yeah, you don't want to be overlapping. Always, um, you know, go to your next set of nonces. Um, yeah, start from zero and then add whatever you need to add. Um, and carry on accordingly. So I'm just going to set that back to zero just for the sake of it. Um, and I'll close that now. Um, okay, so let's move on to the actual um, GPU uh, plotter. The GPU plotter is um, a better option. If you've got a half decent graphics card, you want to use the GPU plotter, um, mostly because it is much, much faster to plot your hard drives than it is with a CPU. Um, some people think that when you're trying to plot your hard drives, the bottleneck is the actual hard drive speed. Um, but if you're using a CPU plotter, it's really your processor can't generate the actual nonces uh, fast enough. Um, so the uh, GPU plotter using your graphics card doesn't have that issue. and It can actually generate um, a vast amount of nonces and it will actually write uh, the nonce is faster than your actual hard drive can actually accept them. So in this case, um, the bottleneck becomes your hard drive, not the actual uh, processor that's actually creating those um, files. Okay, so the GPU plotter is a little bit more complicated than the CPU plotter, um, partly because you have to configure it to use your um, graphics card itself. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'll put a link to the description uh, for this video and it will have all these sort of same files in there. Um, so let me just have a look at this uh, batch file. So I've not actually used this for a little while, so please forgive the uh, if it's a little bit slow. Um, whilst I sort of um, just you know refresh my uh, memory um, exactly how this works. Okay, yeah, um, I've got it now. Um, yeah, if you go with this, this device's text will be um, in your actual own. Um, sorry, in the actual download that you'd actually download. And what the numbers actually mean is um, you have zero, which is the platform ID. Uh, and then we have zero again, which is the device ID. Um, and then you have the work group size, um, the work size, and then how much um, GPU RAM to use. It says 8192, and that's basically gonna use um, all of the actual GPU RAM. You might need to play with these um, numbers. If you actually go through um, it should be yeah a readme it will explain more on those but uh, from my experience I found that these numbers um, worked well from from memory so I'm just gonna leave those um, as they are so the first part is your devices uh, configuration you can also run this devices setup but you should be probably okay with these um, numbers the only thing you might need to change is this number here you might need to change that to a one um, just so it selects your uh, graphics card rather than your CPU. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is and we'll kind of see what happens from there. So that's the actual device um, setup, which is kind of the uh, complicated part. I'll leave that as it is. Um, then we have uh, the make plots uh, file. Let's just edit this one. Okay. So you can see it's kind of similar to the, um, the CPU plotter. So the first part is the call to the actual program itself, the GPU plot generator. Then you've got generate, which tells it to generate the actual files. Now, uh, you in this one you have two different options. You have buffer and you have direct. Um, I normally use buffer. I find it's kind of um, more consistent in terms of writing um, and it just kind of works better for me. And then you have your actual uh, file location. So I'm gonna change it to the same place as we put um, our other plot. So I'm going to go F and then the folder is, uh, in this case it's plots. Um, I just need our um, numeric account ID. I'm going to copy that uh, and this one is for my other account. I'm going to enter that. 
So in this one, the actual configuration is done a little bit different. So then it's an underscore, and then this number is the starting plot. So we've already started from zero to 40,000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from uh, 40,000, and then we're going to add 40,000. And then this again is the actual stagger size. Um, I'm gonna leave that at 20,000, which should use um, 10 megs of system RAM. This, the, the RAM calculations for the uh, plot generator are slightly different from the um, CPU plotter. Um, and then it, underneath that, because it's batch file, we've just got pulls, just so that once the f uh, program finishes, it doesn't close um, and I can see any sort of um, uh, error messages or anything like that. So if I go to save now, and now if we try and uh, run it, we should get some results. Okay, great. So you can see it's detected our device. I've got a GTX 970. Um, it says how much device memory. Um, not sure why it reports that so low. Um, I'll come back to that, I'm not too sure. And then it says it's generating, where it's actually generating, and what sizes, etc. Nonce is 40,000 to there. So that's about nine gigs and it says uh, CPU memory. So all of these uh, variables can change, but you can see here, uh, I thought it was actually gonna use, um, sorry, 10 gigs of RAM, it's actually using five. So you can see that if we adjust this to 40,000 as well, then it uses the actual 10 gigs. Um, but the point that I wanted to get at is the actual speed of this. You can see before we was up to about um, seven, 7,800, I think it was. Um, here we're at 27,000. So it's massively faster and depending on your graphics card um, it will write even faster so you can actually um, also use it to plot uh, multiple drives uh, and files at the same time um, which is really where you get the you know the real benefits from this um, the uh, GPU plotter is um, yeah write multiple drives at the same time you can write three drives at the same time because like I said um, the actual uh, bottleneck in this case is your actual um, disk drive speed, not the actual uh, plot creation speed. So yeah, at the moment it's just going to be here. Yeah, it's going to continue to write, and um, yeah, it's slowed down, and that will actually be because of um, the actual disk speed. If we go to Task Manager, we should see it. So uh, I just buffering up again. Yeah, and then it'll write again um, afterwards. So yeah, the, the bottleneck in this case is the actual disk drive. I'm just gonna close that now. Um, I'm just gonna let that continue to run. Uh, one other thing as well, you'll also notice whether it's um, finished or not. If you press um, F5 and refresh, um, yeah, if the size is zero, then it's not finished basically. And wait till it shows you an actual uh, proper file size. And sometimes the very it will go really fast, and in the last little bit it will kind of um, just stick a little bit. Okay, so yeah, that's just finished now. So it tells you how many nonces it's writing per minute on average, and the total time for creation. Um, and then we've got this little bit here because I type pause, it just doesn't close the window, it keeps it open, so we can just see that little summary there. And if we look at our actual plot files, you can see that the plot is there, and also the correct um, size is there as well as. Um, but that's basically it. So that is how to actually plot your hard drives themselves. Um, so if you have uh, any questions or comments or anything you're confused of or you want me to go back over and try to uh, clarify, um, then please let me know in the comments box below and I'll try my best to sort of clear that whole uh, thing up for you. I know it's um, complicated, there's lots of different sort of facets to it, um, but the best way to work these things out is just to just try and see how you get along and then if you do run into any problems you know go under uh, support forums or you know leave a comment or something and I'll try and help you out personally. So that's it for today's video guys, um, really appreciate you guys um, watching and uh, appreciating these videos and hopefully they provide value and they're helpful to you guys um, and yeah thanks very much. So have a great day and I'll see you on the next Burst Coin video which will be about actually mining these plots. So till then, take care.